Remember the real definition of love we gave last week? The way you will really love someone is that when you have the genuine pursuit of God's intended destiny for that person always guided by God's law. You live in freedom, but within boundaries, always. And by the way, if you thought there were more commandments and instructions and rules in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, than the Brich HaDashah, the New Testament, I did a study on this. I've, I've told you this before, that there are 613 commandments in the Old Testament. And when I read from Matthew to the book of Acts, I had already counted 1,100 commandments and I stopped. There are more commandments in the New Testament Get used to it. Why? Because God doesn't do common. God doesn't do random. He doesn't do accident. He is very intentional. He's very orderly. He's very planned out. He knows the end from the beginning, and he's trying to tell you how to get there. He's not asking you to wander around and figure this thing out. The funny thing is God has never wanted you to figure anything out. You say, oh, Pastor, I'm studying, man, I'm reading, I'm meditating, I'm commentary. I got a really nice email yesterday from one of our disciples, and he said, and just understand, this is me, it doesn't have to be you, it's just me. And he said, I'm doing some study, and I want to know which commentaries you would normally go to. And I don't go to commentaries. I don't use them. They're not bad, they're great, use them. They're good tools, lots of godly men have used them and, 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 and done great with them. I'm not saying anything negative about commentaries, use them. I don't use them. And the reason I don't use them is primarily because I don't believe God is trying to make me figure something out. I believe God has already figured out everything and he's just trying to explain to me what he's already figured out. So when I'm studying, I'm doing a lot more listening than research. I'm doing a lot more comparing of the Bible to the Bible. Let the Bible teach me what the Bible says under the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, that is not to say I've never opened a commentary. Sure, from time to time I do. But it's predominantly not what I do. Because I don't believe the Lord has us on a wild goose chase. Now, if English is not your first language, you probably said, what is that example? What did you just say? Why are we chasing geese? And then I just changed the word goose to geese, and now you're even more confused because you don't know, why did he do that? Well, that's how that word works. It goes from goose to geese, and then the plural is still geese. You can't say geesen or geeses, it just stays geese. It's a weird word. What it means is God doesn't want you chasing something and running after it, just find it. It's right here, he figured it out. Back to Exodus 25, verse eight. Then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Verse 22. There above the, co the cover between the two cherubim that are over the Ark of the Covenant Law, I will meet with you and give you all my commandments for the Israelites. You say, I am so excited that I'm a temple of God. I'm so excited that I'm a dwelling place for his presence. Did you hear what happens when his presence dwells in a place? I give you all my commandments. So if you want to be a dwelling place of God, you better get ready for all of his commandments. Not just the ones that fit today's modern culture. Not just the ones that people are okay using. You better be ready for all of his commandments. Because every commandment in the word of God has a principle that you're supposed to take away from it. I understand that we're not all high priests and we're not all Kohanim and we're, we don't even have a temple and we're not out there killing animals. I get that. But in every one of those commandments, there's a principle that you're supposed to take away. Why? Because you're the temple of God. You should be learning something about your job description. Who are you? Let me give you the key phrase of tonight. We have a free will. But because the spirit of God lives in us, we have boundaries. 
If you don't want boundaries, then you don't get the presence of God. They come together, friends. And the greatest symbolic gesture that the Spirit of God and the law of God and the grace of God and the commandments of God all come together is the Ark of the Covenant, which I'm going to be teaching on next week. That was a teaser. Come back. Ark of the Covenant. Kind of an important thing. Inside the Ark, the tablets of God's commandments. On top of the Ark, God's presence. If you want the presence, you get the commandments. They don't separate one from another. 